stuff. A two, a two. And through our previous lives, there were acts and there were things that were committed against others that was your desire to rectify them and to atone and bring them into a new expression in another life. That is the life that is now. In your own family, you have found disunity. You found as a child that it was not a whole, that it was not complete, that it was disjointed, and therefore you could never join together in a cycle and a circle of perfect harmony and perfect understanding and love. With you too there has always been the gathering together only to disband and separate and to extend out beyond your reach that has always left an unsatisfied desire within your heart and within your soul and within your mind. You have never known a time since childhood where you could say absolutely and positively I am happy and satisfied with all things. You have now returned to live this present life for liberation and you're doing it well. Much depends upon the future because you have within your keeping two souls that have to be guided, protected, and also liberated. You find such a strange difference between the members of your families. Attractions are two parts of the families and a avoid with others. In your family there is a member who now needs all of the love and understanding and attention. It is one that you look upon his body that suffers and much that has been disconnected leading to the brain and much that has become useless in his daily labors and thinking and fulfilling the destiny of a complete life that is karma and he has not come into full realization in order to liberate himself from its bondage because he could be liberated instantaneously if he would but recognize and release from his past that he is clinging to. You have been a part of this life in the past you are a part of it now to the extent that by your presence and the radiation of your soul that you can hold that into the groove of its destiny until it can be resurrected through transition. Danger threatens all along the path the danger has been avoided once. We hope that it can be again and you are the instrument to prevent it. That is your karma and your liberation. Within all of the others, there are trials, there, are mu there is much uh, that is brought into effect that you have to be the one to dissolve it. You have to be the one 
to recreate it and bring it out of its depth into a greater form of realization. The members of your family are like jewels of precious stones that are brought up from the depths of the earth. And until they are cut, they cannot release the fire and the life and the beauty and the color of their depth. The cutting is hard. It takes a very hard, strong instrument to do the cutting. You cut the gem by the power of your will to release the radiance, the life, the beauty and the glory of its being. That is your karma. Your spiritual gifts are close, yet not in full expression until this karmic law is completely dissolved and absorbed and transformed and then into this kingdom of your desire into this kingdom of your hope there will manifest the glory and the realization of that that you have accomplished the rewards for your service and the glorious outlook for the future that will open the gates wide and set you free in the universe with the power of knowing and with the power of God directing your footsteps and liberating you forever from the past into the future of service to others and a full realization of the happiness for your future and for eternity that have been the hope for many thousands of years. Your destiny is bright. The shadows are in the valley of the past. The future is beyond the horizon for the rising sun of the dawn of the new. And the full streaks of gray are appearing in the darkness of the night of yesteryear for the glory of the tomorrow for your future. Did I reach everybody? As I have told you in classes and at times, I shall go into the different lives of the past, the countries, the teachers. Remember the teachers that you are aware of, of their identity here in this class. Only a small portion of the teachers in your band and the angels I have spoken of. Remember there have been teachers since the beginning, guides and helpers, they are still in existence. Some of them in the body, but that does not separate them from your soul.
I shall give Kozaz, Kozaz order to him in private. And now, dear Franz, if there's anything you'd like to ask me, I'd be glad to answer. Well, if Anna one is receiving anything, if you will please give it out, we'll be glad to have you do that. There's a wonderful vibration of your orders have all met into one glorious color, which is the electric blue. That is Zane Teeters. Zane Teeters. She was a crystal reader and has been a friend of Juvenia's for 30 years. She was helping me. Yeah. She has just been over a little over a year, about two years now. Yeah. Thank you, dear. And then you were speaking. What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all goodness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withers, the, fly, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I read you eight verses. May the Lord bless the reading <coughs> of his word. To our soul's comfort, let us pray with Brother Bittish.
and they does not enter the temptation. But the devil from all of you signed and became power and power forever on me. This morning I have the Father and once more again. And if we all were served by the Bible, the same time of life, we will tell them when they come. They can be the party of the Lord. 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 Thank you. 
them for Jesus' sake. May they see thy servant so produce abundant fruit and keep the precious treasure there and ever with it part. O oh Lord, we pray that thou will bless this offering that has been taken. Bless those that is on the battlefield of earth. Give them strength and courage for Jesus' sake. O oh Lord, bless thy people everywhere. Bless their church that the door is open in thy name. And all that do to bind us to pray for, save us in the end for Jesus' sake. Amen. <laughs>
grateful to be here at this time, uh, always in the house of the Lord, to give thanks and to speak for the Lord. <coughs> we can say that we are happy always because of life and health that the Lord has given us. We're going to talk with you at this time about the cause of being a Christian. The cause of not being a Christian, rather. The cause of not being a Christian. We will find in the 16th chapter of the Gospel recorded by St. Matthew and the 26th verse. For what is a man's profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what is a man's profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? It would be a very poor life if he would just, his life wouldn't profit him anything just to gain the whole world and lose his own self. We may notice that as we further think about the business of being a Christian, the question is, of course, arises, there is a heavy cause of, of being a Christian. So many times we say it costs me to be a member of the church. Of course it costs, but when we think in terms of it again and the real way of life, that it costs much more if we are not a Christian. It's, uh, it would be pretty bad that God didn't know anything about us if we didn't ever give anyone anything at any time and go away and lose one's whole self. The cause it is, it is not... Uh, to be minimized, but perhaps the cause of being a Christian can be better appreciated when we consider the cause of not being a Christian. Uh, the writer of the Proverbs says, the way of the transgressors are hard. The way of the transgressors are hard. And when we think of the way of the transgressor being hard, we find that it is true that uh, the Bible does say the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And when we would think in time, oh, that when I have done the best I could and God would give me eternal life, we wouldn't think of a little thing as a cause of not of being a Christian. We wouldn't think of the cause, how much it cost us. Uh, and going on uh, talking about it, and when Jesus gave the emphasis on, uh, and he risen the question and said, for what is man's profit if he shall gain the whole world? and lose his own soul. Non-Christian creates uh, the cause and pay a pitiful profit. When we are non-Christian, we create nothing and pays a pitiful profit, pays a pitiful price to the church and to those that surround us. We pay so little to life we must think of the cause of the material things of the world. 
billions of dollars are wasted because of wars and expanded for them past, present, and future. This condition arises not merely because of the extent of dictators, but because uh, the world has not yet learned to live together on a Christian basis. Uh, not learn to live together on Christian basis. For as we think of uh, this and some of the things that cause uh, not being a Christian, uh, crime takes a tremendous toll in the world today. Crime is one of the great uh, things in life that will carry the world to destruction is because of crime and because there are so many people in the world who are not Christians and yet because of, the, of our persecution and because of the social life and so many unchristians, they breed crime. They cause crime to be because of this little thing that we call hatred. And because of hatred, it breeds crime. And because of non-like, and because of jealousy and strife one to another. Maybe sometime because that God blesses someone more than he does you or I, then we would think, of getting mad with them because God blessed them. But I don't think that we ought to uh, get mad with an individual simply because God blesses them. Uh, he says that he made his son to shine on the just and on the unjust because he is God and none else beside him. And we find that another uh, discrimination it is is uh, a racial hatred and conflict is another acute problem in our world today. Uh, the condition existed because the world is not Christian enough to recognize that uh, since Jesus died for all of us, we need not think that is so much on anyone else, but because of the fact that it is hate and it is strife that it is a discrimination. Maybe I think that I'm better than you are, or you think that you are better than I, but uh, God doesn't say that. God has no respectable person because we are all human being kind. We are all God's children. Yes. And as we say sometime, you know, and families allow me to say this, that it never matters sometime there uh, may be 12 or 13 children and all of those children there's full brothers and sisters and yet they do not have ways that is alike and they are all belonging to that one family now is no need of us saying as children of this world as God and saying that he is our father is to say that uh, there is any different because God has some bad children too and he has some good children because he is the father of the universe. He is the God of our salvation and we find that regardless of color or creed, race, that we should share and care for all races as we are all therefore brethren uh, we do think of that we are brethren one to another. This may seem to be, and speaking of the cause of a church not being a Christian church, and we may think that this may seem to be contradictory. Ah, uh, it is. Ah, uh, but we must admit that so many times and so many things in the church are not Christians, and since that uh, we fall short of the Christian ideals. Uh, this 
creates a heavy call to the church and uh, the division of the churches and to various branches and denominations and they cause the Christian race to be handicapped and advances and none uh, but the Christian uh, risen primarily because of certain groups and the church was not Christian enough to allow someone else to have their different opinions. Oh yes, we must think in time that somebody else, they cannot do just like we do. Uh, they may not can sing like we sing, uh, but that's all right. They are God's children too. Yes. And we need not think uh, because we can pray and do not belong to God because they certainly is God's people too. And we need not have any hate as to say that old so-and-so, I don't like their family. Uh, we must get that old hate out of us and let the church be a more Christianized church. Let the church be the place that can settle the differences that is in a struggling world today and not get mad with somebody else uh, just because God blesses them and he don't bless you. Uh, but think on that if he blessed somebody else, that surely this same God that has blessed them can bless me too. Uh, we must think of the church as being Christianized and there's only one way by which we can make it a Christianized church is by making our self-wise Christianize the failure of the church members. Yes, to be Christians is handicapped uh, because and they fail to get uh, the high ideas in life, but they want to think on all the time of what I done yesterday. They want to think on back yonder and 76 and we, was, we are going on. If we want to go farther, then we must take on tomorrow. And we must try to reach the light that is over yonder, which yes. is Christ Jesus, and reach the higher heights of life, and not stay in that same old run, and not think of the things that we've done yesterday, because it doesn't help today. But we must go on and do something today. Then we find the failure of the church members uh, a practice in the principles are given and held back the church in its activities is because of its, and then and, and when we don't want to be missionaries, we want to say that just the women's is missionaries, but we are missionaries. If we would be a Christian, we would have to be a missionary because God, Christ, was a missionary. When he came, he had a mission to carry out. When, when we come into the church, we are coming into a mission church. We are coming into a church that is a mission church, and it has a mission out yonder as to save somebody, is to show someone the way of God, is to show some way to God. Third, as we go on, we think, of the cause of an individual not being a Christian. What is the cause of it? He is still a servant of sin. Yes, an individual, when he's not a Christian, it causes him this much, that he is still a servant of sin, and he always will be. He is still unable to withstand temptations. You know, as the song that go, Eel not to temptation, for healing is sin, each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight man will onward, dark passion subdue. Ask the Savior to help you, he will carry you through. When we can't heal it, and when we, we, we is not a master of sin, we can't ask God to help us. But we are going to yield to that temptation because we are not Christianized. We are not a Christian and it is no use to us talking to God because we lack of the harmony with him. We don't know anything about him. He doesn't know anything about us as being a Christian, as doing anything. 
you say, well, we may see someone out yonder uh, and say, old so-and-so never does anything, but he still gets along. That's all right. You work out your soul salvation. Yeah. We've got to forget about what God does for somebody else. He's just doing it for a season. Maybe it would be called that he thinks that he will do better one day. And then and you can't take the chance with yourself that somebody else has. You can't take the chance or else you will lose your soul because there's a sense that it is already lost. Oh yes, there's a sense that it is already lost because you say, well, I don't know anything about him personally myself, but I know that my mother and my father did but it doesn't matter about them and what they've done. You must have the association with Christians and with God yourself and have fellowship with them and have such fellowship as to their highest satisfaction in life, their highest satisfaction in life, where well, that we can get joy out of doing the will of God, where well, that we can get joy out of singing the songs of Almighty God. Joy out of going on when trouble shall come and when we, and when we, when we fail to achieve the highest in life, we can't have no joy. No, no, the joy is gone because we think in time that of ourselves, we don't think of helping nobody else. But saying as for me and my house, we will just stand here in a corner all alone by ourselves, but we must launch out into the deep and see that God will help us. We must make one step toward him if we would determine him to make a step towards us. Such individuals fail to receive eternal fellowship. Yes. Such individuals fail to receive an eternal fellowship with God, where the angels would be around the throne of grace, where there would be all joy. But we got to work out our soul salvation right here. We've got to love me one another, as the Bible says, that you got to love me one another and pray for them that they spitefully use you and not strike back because God is not a striking back God. God is a going fiber God. He's a God that will do right. And in my conclusion, may I say about the course, the course of an education may be great, that, uh, that some may feel that they cannot pay for it, <coughs> but the course of ignorance is still greater Yes, the cause of ignorance is still greater, for it uh, forever takes its toll in life. Yes, when we don't want to pay for something that we can get free, when we can just, you know, everyone should know something now, because these are no more dark days. We can learn something we can get out on our knees and talk with God and say, I want you to fix me and make me what you would have me to be. Yeah. And we could get what we need if we talk to him, if we tell him, and he would hear us. Yes, the cause of health may be great for some of us. Yes, we would spend everything that we had to get our health back. Everything that we have, if we could just meet the cause for health and illness. Yeah. But when we don't pay that cause that it is for health, we will still always be sick. We will always be lingering and going on and doing nothing if we don't pay that cause. And in my conclusion, here, it says the cause of being a Christian. Oh yes, we say, some of us says, that it cost me so much until I think I will just let the church go. But they don't think in time, not one time about their soul. 
who is looking for a place to rest, looking for a place when done with this world. It will cost more for us to go to hell and can't come out. But here we have a chance. Here we can give whatsoever we can and say, Lord, you know, if I had it, I would do. We can say that he's given me health and strength and there is something I can do. Maybe there is someone that I can bring into the church. Maybe I can go out there on the street and pick up that little raggedy boy and girl and bring them to the church of God. Maybe I can go in the slums and get that person who hadn't been to church and tell them, says, brother, come on up and let's go up to the Mount of Olives. Let's go up there where they're singing and praying and everything will be all right and we'll pay some of the cost still. It doesn't mean that we should pay money for costs, but there is so much work that we can do. There is so many things that we can do. And place of that, we are stoning someone and trying to lay them in their grave. Why not if we are so strong and they are so weak is to reach down and get them? But we don't think in terms that Jesus one day when we were thinking out yonder deep in sin, reached down and got us up with love and it lifted us lifted us out of the muck and the mire of clay and we too have got to reach out yonder and get somebody and call someone to be saved may the lord bless you may you think on this message the cause of not being a christian jesus keep me now
And whatever it might be, well, that's what it's going to be. And he are always willing to help a good cause. He's down here in the Southland, and he's from up north, and he's over here at this mill over here. He's one of the, I won't say what he is, one of the best and the oldest machinists I reckon. <coughs> I won't say the oldest man in that mill. He don't have to bow for anything but to the Lord, and he's going to always do that. You can tell he's a lord fed man. And he here with us, he's not hunting any money. He's not hunting any money. He's going to give money all the time whenever you ask him for it. You need to be afraid of him. And you brother down here, I told him that we had a fine set of men here in town. We were never worried about our men at all. But when we get ready for our men, we call them and they come. And we got Dickens here from all the church. We got, uh, we got some ladies here and guns from the Holiness Church too. We got a mixed train today. And if you want to make a show enough train, a mixed train. And we got the white and we got the black and all here today. And we got every kind. So I don't see no reason why we're failing today. Now, brother, uh, yo, I haven't been bothered, y'all. The preacher is going to come before you over here. And we're going to ask everybody to do this quick as possible. Now, he has something else. As soon as this service is over, that he's going to present to you all. And I know you're going to like it. And he'll understand us. And we ought to be understanding him, only. not he? You know, God know what to do, don't he? He know who to send to you and why to send you to, don't he? And so we want to get right in line with that. Now, why he's going to come up here, and why the secretary of trustee board going to come right on here, and we'll ask those 10 and 5 all right quick to come here, and we're going to be sued. Now, let's, he's going to be quick with his work, and he's right with us, and he's not going to hurry, but he's taking his time with us. We're going to show him how quick we can take up this order. All right, so the secretary of trustee board right over here now. Come on, let us get through, y'all. Y'all, come on. Wait a minute, Bill.